Life on Earth is based on about 90 elements. Almost all of them were once upon a time created in the hearts of stars and during star explosions, so-called supernova. What happens in this process in stars at the microscopic level is impossible for researchers to observe. But with the help of theoretical models and laboratory experiments, the riddles surrounding the origins of the elements can be solved, also here at the GSI in Darmstadt. My name is Karl-Heinz Langanka, I'm a nuclear theorist, and my main interest is to understand how nature uh, produces the elements as we observe them in the universe. This happens in stellar evolutions, and uh, as a nuclear theorist, we try to simulate all the nuclear properties of those nuclei which are important in these processes. The uh, supernova in itself, one of the most energetic events in the universe, is evolving so much of nuclear physics, so much of exotic nuclear physics, that for theorists this is a tremendous challenge. The lighter elements are formed in the hearts of stars like our own sun. Initially, atomic cores of hydrogen fuse to form helium, the next heaviest element. These in turn fuse to form further, even heavier elements. Thus, in heavy stars, all elements of the periodic table up to iron, element 26, are formed. Then the process stops. The nuclear burning uh, source is ceased at the moment where we have reached nickel and iron because these are the nuclei with the highest binding energy per nucleon. That means if you fuse nuclei on nickel and iron, this will cost you energy and will not generate energy anymore. So this iron core then has no energy source and will then start to contract and finally collapse very fast under its own gravity. This leads to what is called a supernova explosion. During the explosion, many free neutrons are created. They then attach successively to cores, which hence become very neutron-rich. Thus, they are very unstable and decay. In the nuclear core, a neutron is transformed into a proton. This means that a different element is generated. For example, an iron core becomes a cobalt core. Again and again, neutrons are absorbed and decay. Thus, within milliseconds, all elements up to uranium are created. How this process unfolds exactly is what Karl-Heinz Langanke and his colleagues wish to find out. However, if we want to simulate a supernova explosion or also the nuclear synthesis, which is associated with the supernova, we have to know the properties of these nuclei. But for this, we must first find them. That's like looking for a needle in a haystack. We use the superfragment separator to filter out the isotope, which we are interested in, from the soup of exotic nuclei produced at the target station. The superfragment separator is a combination of superconducting dipole and quadrupole magnets, where the dipole magnets are used to diverge the beam and the quadrupoles to focus it again. Here, for example, you see a dipole magnet which has been built by our international partners from the Budka Institute in Russia. It weighs 96 tons. In total, three such magnets are needed for the construction of the superfragment separator, which will be built at the new accelerator facility, FAIR. This replaces the fragment separator with which the GSI researchers have already discovered many nuclides. A fragment separator has the ability to separate and sort the nuclides produced by the accelerator with the help of strong magnets. To filter out the isotope we are interested in, we use this particular setting at the superfragment separator. This is illustrated here with the grid size of the calendar. If now our soup of isotopes runs through the superfragment separator, at the end with the correct setting, we filter at the end out that isotope which we want to use for the experiments. These specific nuclei can then be guided into the experimental storage ring behind us. And in the storage ring, the nucleus runs by basically the speed of light several million times per second in the ring. And once it passes a certain position, it gives a signal. And from this signal, we can determine the mass of the nucleus and we can also determine the half-life. Karl-Heinz Langanke and his colleagues can then feed the mass and half-life data of the nuclides into their theoretical models. In this way, the calculations and simulations of a supernova can be made to be more and more exact. The goal? To find out how the elements of which we are made came to be.